the state of me. Um, I had my uh, football last night and I had a shower, got in bed and um, I didn't like wash my hair very well. Um, as you do. So this is um, Bertie. Now I will link his video in the comment, in the description at the bottom. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear the um, air conditioning, but it's it's, um, it's September 7th and it's still nice and warm here in the UK. We've had a bit of a, um, a warm week, which was a nice surprise for us all, so it always makes us feel a lot better when we have a bit of sunshine in the UK. So, um, Bertie was a border terrier that I clip and I don't hand strip. So like I say, I'll link the description, uh, in the description, the video of, of what I did. Because I did a hand strip one and I did a clip. Um, and it was just really, I wanted to just show you how it grows back. So as you can see, it doesn't, it doesn't grow back too badly. Can you see? And if you remember what I did, I get, so I always go large first. I always say go large first. <laughs> I go with a longer blade first. So, uh, and I reverse it up. And this is how I clip Bertie. I don't go with like my, my normal commercial blades, you know, my my, my snap-on blades with my commercial clipper. I use my um, my brav and comb attachment, and I just lift above that um, undercoat, and it gives me a lovely plush look. Sometimes, if you go too far uh, into the undercoat, you get this very light. Um, hair, but if you just can you just get underneath it just to where just to where the undercoat is without clipping too far into it, you get this nice plush look, and it looks lovely and neat doing it this way. And I just wanted you to see how it grows back. Um, after seeing the first video. Um, and what I do is I bath him first. So I bath him and get him lovely, nice and crispy clean. There's no wet bits at all. So I can literally just glide through with my comb attachment. Here we go. So I've managed to do the four on his body. And I probably will go slightly shorter on his leg so that I catch catch it. Because, like I say, I used to hand strip him, but it started to react. Uh, it started to react to it, um, and he, he started getting sore. You can see where he licks here. He started to get sort of allergies and sore. So we went. I went for this option with him. Obviously, I do prefer to hand strip them, but as you can see, that looks, that looks really nice, doesn't it? So then what I'll probably do, let's try the three first. And you'll notice what I do as well when I'm doing these curve attachments so that I don't click because this is quite stretchy skin. I just pull it underneath so it's taller. So when I'm going with my curl, I'm not going to catch that area. So there's a little bit of a tip for today. 
So that's catching it a little bit better. And I'll probably get my um, piano teeth curve fluffers and just tailor it, tailor it all in. Also, I'll do the same with the tail. Um, I don't clip it off with, say, a blade. I'll actually, I'll either do it with scissors or I'll get a comb attachment, a long comb attachment, and make it sort of like a, like it would look. I have a strip in. I don't really go to the bone on it. I just go above that undercoat and it just makes the whole look a lot better. Making sure I'm holding the end of the Scissors are locked up there, obviously. Uh, sort that out. So his tail's it's got a little bit, it's, it's quite nice and full, chunky. So I'll do that all over. Um, also, I'll do the same with the ears. I'm not going to take them down to the wood. I'll probably take them um, on a 7 rather than a 10, so it doesn't look so severe. I'll come back and show you after. So I've pretty much done the body on the four, uh, some bits I've cut with the three and uh, some with the two. I've just sort of gauged to see how it's sitting and then I might go up to the shorter blades. Um, yeah, so just trying to get that nice plush uh, look to this uh, clip. So the clip looks so it doesn't look so severe. Sometimes if you're using just a 7M um, or a 10 on a, on a Border Terrier, it is quite severe and it doesn't quite look nice and neat. So I've done one ear, I've done one ear. And what I've done is I've gone over with the 7F inside and out. Um, and then those bits that haven't, ca haven't caught, um, I lift it up just get my thinners and I just blend any little bits that that don't look sitting in. Well, I don't want to go with the tent because it's too severe. I want to try and make it as look as, as natural as, as I can. So that was the that was it before and that's it after. Uh, so I'll just I'll just do it on this uh, there's so many different tone and colour to the on that area. It just takes a little bit of packing about. But I think the overall overall look looks better. Then if you were to just shave it on a tan. It just gives me a I just find it gives me a lot of natural natural 
solo, so I'm just gonna go with it. You can see how, and you can see compared to that one, how there's still all of this, these long bits. zoom it in on my uh, editing. So obviously then finish around the ear using my finger and thumb so I don't catch the edge edges. Very nice and close. Nice and neat. See, it's not quite cold, that, so what I do is I just lift up the brush and I just go with my thinners. And I just blend it up. Kind of look the same now. So with the face, this has got this fluffy stuff here. I'm gonna go with the three. Come here, sweetie. Let's see whether that not quite catching that. I'll go with the two. Same with the, like the snails, so there's like a beauty mark here, here, here. So I'll just do it some there, and then I'll blend the rest in. So, I'm go with you. Soften 
Sort of leaving his eyebrows for now. That better, isn't it? So it's a bit cakey, a bit cool, that one, too. So it's kind of like that now. Just blend that on the side. So you might be thinking, why does she want it so neat and tidy? Well, I've always found, and I've, and I've carried on my career that way, is that when all my work is nice and neat and tidy and the dogs are well presented and they're, they're happy, um, then people notice your work. So from people noticing your work, you will get other work. Um, if a dog is, you know, looks unkempt and there's a bit sticking out here, there and everywhere, you know, they might not go to that person and say, oh, where'd you get your dog done? So just bear that in mind when you want, just want to spend an extra five minutes making sure that your dog is neat and tidy. It will make all the difference. And word of mouth is a very powerful advertisement for your business and it's also free. So with their eyebrows, they're only an accentuation. They don't really have the like snarls or eyebrows. So I'm just going to shape that round there. I'm well, just shaping it around really.
I like these kind of big piano things because they kind of cut like a chunk of but we'll leave it like a blender. So, oh dear. We were just having a bit of a malfunction. So, let's have a look at your face. Where are you going to look? There's a, like an otter, otter-like face, isn't it? Let's go on, looks like that now. So yeah, that was my my take on the clip clip border terrier. Um, and I just don't. I think it looks a bit less severe than using a ten or a seven F. Um, I think you can sort of go back over with the the two if you see any little little bits. I always check out the mother work, the right kit to be nice and neat. Sometimes they go on the floor and while, while the owner's here, I'll see a little bit and I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. Because they shake and it pops out and it, it'll bug me otherwise. So I'll, I'll add his original, um, his original video, uh, so you can see, but I just wanted to just show how it grew. Um, I did bathing first as well, got it really, really, really dry so that I could use the comb over. Um, because so many border terriers, especially when they've been castrated and stuff, they have a really thick, dense undercoat. And you think you're dry, you rub your fingers on it, it'll come back wet. So they've got to be really, really dry for this technique. So look, look at the um, look at the camera. What do you think? That better now? Yeah. So there you go, there's Bertie Vino. And I just want to mention that there's um, people that are, are subscribing now. Thank you so, so much for subscribing. It does mean a lot to me. It means the channel will grow with my hair like a scarecrow today. <laughs> Scary grow. Um, it means a lot to me that the channel can grow because the nearer I can, I can get to 500, even a thousand, I can start doing lots more things. Um, and I know there's like 80% of people that do watch don't subscribe so if you could just hit the you know the subscribe button it would mean the world to me um, and obviously I would love your comments on what you'd like to see as well um, what 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 videos that you would find interesting that I could maybe do that would help you whether it be equipment or a particular style or something, anything at all really. Um, I am going to do a um, more of a talky one without the dogs uh, shortly. Um, basically, I don't know if anybody, if any of you watch the crime, uh, true crime. I like to listen while I'm working. Um, and... Um, I would like to do, I'm getting, I am getting to the point here, um, a pet groomer's perspective. So, you know, there's lots of th things that are really great in this industry and there's lots of things that are really sort of upsetting for groomers um, where customers are, are involved. Um, I'm trying to, I'm so fortunate that all my customers 
A hundred percent of my customers are fantastic. They come on a regular basis. They're pretty much maintaining the dogs. You know, we're not having a restart every single time. But there are groomers out there, all different types of groomers, mobile groomers, groomers in salons and homes and all sorts of things. And they all have these um, sort of issues um, so it would be nice to put a pet groomer's perspective to it and give you a scenario of something that um, that I've seen that I would put my perspective on. So it, it could be, um, you know, that the customer hasn't understood something or, um, you know, They've shaved it and they've complained and just just go through. So I'll get I'll do some scenarios and I'll just talk about it if that's okay with you. Just thought it might sort of help. And I would like to do both sides. So see the owner side and see the the owner the owner side and the groomer side. But get a pet groomer's perception. So they're here. They're here. So that's vertigo. Yeah, but I I um. I like the listen to the crowd. I like it when the bad guys get caught. Um, but there is a, a particular person that I follow called the um, the detective's perspective, and I thought, do you know what? That would be a really good idea for um, for a talk um, to talk about. Um, all these different scenarios that happen within the grooming industry some good some bad um, so I suppose it would be better you know for you to listen to um, because if you're doing it while you're working or you do it while you're working <laughs> you're watching while you're working um, it's hard for you to see Visually, what I'm doing if you're a dog groomer and you're watching while I'm grooming. So I thought I would just talk about something that, excuse me, belly, that I've come across. So I'll find a scenario, I will talk about the scenario, I'm going to ask you what your perspective is. Um, so, you know, whether it be owners or, you know, and just try and raise a bit of awareness and education for people um, in general you know customers that, that quite don't see don't quite see our perspective and that we all we want to do is do good you know uh, most of us there are people i know there will be people that um are doing this job for the, all the wrong reasons and it's just not working out for them but their career will be short-lived um, but if we can just talk over a few things if it helps a few people that would be good and it's something that I always used to do oh, my things. it's something that I always used to do while I was in the pet salon we used to talk about um, different things or something that I might have seen, oh, such and such of this, and then we'd talk about it. So, um, so yeah, I just thought that would good. That would be good. So, watch out for that, and it's going to be the pet groomer's perspective. And um, yeah, look forward to that. And if you have liked, thank you. And if you subscribe, thank you. And if you haven't, please do. It would help the channel grow. And I'll see you very soon. Sorry about the hair.